September the 13th, 1848, near Cavendish, Vermont. Just because a woman agreed to have a toe stepped on for one dance doesn't mean she's in love with you, James. I suppose you're after thinking that she's taken by yourself? Well, I'm taking her out tonight. Ask her for you. You liar! I have to know that she's visiting her parents tonight. And how do you know that, may I ask? Because she can only see me tomorrow night. I don't believe it. Well, you can ask her yourself tonight. After the late last night. <laughs> <laughs> you liar! Yes! Yes! Liar! One more like that, James! James, I'll go after this Dorothy myself. This is Phineas Gage. Ah. Come on now. Get up there and you start cutting down that brush. Uh. Benjamin, you get over here and start leveling off this timber. Hop to it. Come on, you lot. What are you looking at? Got a lot of yards to make today. And time's money. Set in there, Billy. Gage is an intelligent, well-balanced man. Feeling better now, James? Yeah. He's a modest and reliable person. He's in charge here because he can make careful, well-informed decisions. All parts of a healthy brain work together. The red emotional limbic system passes on its messages to the blue intellectual frontal cortex, the part of the brain which assigns priorities to the messages. Everything ready, Billy? Yep. Good. Give her lots of sun, Billy boy. Lots of sun. Okay. Give her lots of sun. I need a jerk! Give me that! Give me that! Give me that! Give me that! Normally, the two brain systems keep thought and emotion in equilibrium. James! James? Huh. Yeah. Good. Here goes! Oh! Almost a century and a half after Gage's accident, we can guess that his limbic system, frontal cortex, and the connections between the two were damaged by the passage of the tamping iron through his brain. The limbic system is now free to fire emotional messages without the restraint exercised by the frontal cortex. But why did Gage feel so little pain? Normally, pain signals move up the spinal column to stations in the brain which pass on the messages to the frontal cortex. At the microscopic level of the neural net, information is passed on from cell to cell. It's through this system that the pain messages reach the frontal cortex. The passage of pain messages occurs partly through a chemical called substance P which is projected across the tiny gap, the synapse, from one cell to the next. If enough of the chemical reaches the receptors of the next cell, the cell fires and the pain messages continue. Often when pain or stress occurs, endorphins are released. Endorphins are the natural morphines of the brain. Gage's pain was probably lessened by endorphins, diminishing the transmission of substance P across the synaptic gap. Come on, you can make it, man. Here, I think this will help you feel better. Sometimes just believing in a cure is enough to dampen pain. Water has no pain-killing properties, but it may have given Phineas Gage some relief by triggering the release of more pain-resisting endorphins. Oh, if Gage had taken morphine, it would have inhibited cell firing by impairing the transmission of substance P, just as the endorphins do, blocking the pain signals. Doctor, 
The young Edward Williams, a former railroad man himself, was the first doctor summoned. Can you walk? Uh, yes. Let us through. The man's hurt. Oh. Oh, that tapping iron went right to his head. Oh, no. Science's great interest in Phineas Gage was in how the severing of his frontal cortex from his limbic system completely changed his behavior and character. Oh, no. Come on, Phineas. Let us take you up to bed. Oh, no. Leave me alone. I just want to stay outside. Phineas, you'd be better inside. I'm staying right here! <laughs> It's Doc Williams. Who? Doc Williams. <laughs> Doc Williams. <laughs> he is work enough for you, Doctor. <laughs> oh Gage's words were prophetic. His historic case sparked widespread curiosity into how physical changes in the brain affect behavior. God, Gage. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, enough of this nonsense. Let's get you off the bed right now. Come on, come on. Oh, no. Easy, easy. Uh, Samuel. Oh, back to work, eh, boys. Come on, in the house. Come on. Come on. Come on. Easy. I think I've got the last piece of bone. Oh. Watch out. See if there's anything else down there. My right hand is touching my left hand, clear through his head. Once the connections between the frontal cortex and the limbic system are gone, the limbic system is free to fire its messages of emotion uninhibited by the frontal cortex and behavior becomes erratic and unpredictable. Ah, you know what I like, Doctor? Mm -hmm. I like to have my old dog up here. Come here, Beth. Here, boy. Come on. <laughs> Keep your head still. Oh, Billy. Oh, oh. Uh, Billy. Oh, wait. Keep your head still. Oh, we have to see the man, eh? Hey. Easy, easy. Lie back. Let's see what we can do about your dog, Phineas. Go, go get Biff, Billy. Go get Biff, eh? Hey? Biff died. Come on, Biff, no! Lie back. <laughs> Lie back. Lie back. Lie back. I don't want to do it now. I'm going to sleep. Against all odds, Gage survived, physically. He never did regain his emotional and intellectual self-control, balance, and judgment. His ability to communicate with other human beings decreased, but he developed a special affinity for animals. <laughs> But for the man Gage used to work with, he had become a man out of control. The balance between his emotions and his intellectual faculties hey! destroyed. Hey, wait up, man! Hey, don't leave without your foreman, hey! Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got a new foreman. What? Who? Who? I'm the foreman now. You? Benjamin. Oh. <laughs> oh, you can't take care of yourself, Benjamin. Let alone a whole group of men, eh? Oh. <laughs> I'm still in charge. Hey. Eh? Hope you'll be back, Phineas. But not today. Hey, how can you take my job? Phineas Cage! I'm a better man than you! Any day! The best foreman! 
We'll come by later, Phineas. I'm the best. I'm the best. No! Not that way! We're still at the cutting. The work's over there, eh, the explosion? The explosion? Oh. This is not the man that was Gage. Oh. He's like an animal now. An animal's emotions in a man's body. Gage died 12 years later, still unbalanced. At the Warren Museum at Harvard University, the tamping rod and Gage's skull are preserved, a monument to research into how physical changes in the brain affect behavior. Utilizing the most modern tools of brain science investigation, doctors Hannah and Antonio Damasio at the University of Iowa Neurology Laboratory have studied Phineas Gage's skull and the tamping rod. They have been able to anatomically determine which areas of his brain were the most seriously damaged. Their investigation has revealed major damage to both prefrontal cortical areas, more extensively on the left side. This region is reciprocally connected with the subcortical nuclei involved with emotional processing in the amygdala and hypothalamus. When the prefrontal region is damaged in this way, an individual may not be able to control emotions that originate in these subcortical structures. This was profoundly evident in Phineas Gage.